I'm sorry for being a bit late, uh, as usual. Not the traffic today, but it is very good. But uh, uh, I will be late in my office, leaving uh, from my office. So anyway, uh, I thank uh, the Department of Civil Engineering JG for giving me this opportunity to be back with you. Today, being Monday, I congratulate all of you for replacing this time to interact with us today. Smart simulation is an event that I conduct in all the colleges. I try to interact with the as many simulators as possible, but in simulators, and uh, sharing my experience with them about the career in civil engineering. Because I am, I was like you about uh, 30 years back, uh, just uh, finishing my graduation and not knowing where to go, what to do. And I was helped by one of my guru who has counseled me and helped me pitch my direction proper and uh, target right. And then I am benefited out of just 10 minutes uh, counseling he did for me. He has changed the entire course of my life. So I felt that having benefited from such uh, counseling, I must do that to give it back to the society. I am benefited by one such uh, great personality and uh, why would I do it to my successors for future. So part of that is simulation as part of my commitment to do that practice. So I keep talking about this topic for the last 25 years. That is civil engineering profession as a challenging career. So everybody is confused, I am sure. First of all, in joining civil engineering itself. Many people think that Civil engineering is the last or least preferred branch of engineering. And uh, how many of you have defied that logic? Can you raise the hands? It means, uh, how many of you have chosen civil engineering? Okay, one reason is JNTU. In JNTU, you got civil engineering. That is okay. But you would have got electronics in CBIT, but still preferred civil in uh, JNTU. Anybody there like that? Yeah, that's good. So you have preferred JNTU and civil engineering. That would be definitely, yeah, I can understand that. And I am such a person, actually. I prefer civil engineering. I, I know many people who, who prefer civil engineering and benefit out of it. Because civil engineering is a field where if you are up to certain level of uh, common sense, IQ level, and uh, ability to think, solve problem, you will be successful definitely, which is not assured in other branches of engineering definitely. Yeah, and as advised by somebody, always in career planning, if one wants to be successful, you have to be best in whatever field you are. I am sure you will say that uh, how many people can be best. I say that in civil engineering, everybody can be best. Everybody can be best and everybody has the opportunity. We are only losing the opportunity to others. We are giving away our opportunity to others by not coming to civil engineering. This is the fate of civil engineering. I hope you are able to follow me. Anybody has doubt? Like, uh, I will explain what is that. Today's condition of roads, today's condition of buildings, even our own department building, if you study, they are not the best. They are not the best. Because they are not built by the best. Definitely. But, uh, the only uh, civil engineer who is collected with that uh, title bar, uh, and he lived for 102 years <coughs> and uh, served the country, including Hyderabad. The Hyderabad city is also benefited by Moksha the Mysore estate. Mysore state and uh, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, everywhere, Maharashtra. He worked for so many states those days, 100 years back, and uh, in developing the water supply, controlling the flood, managing the water, all these things. And also he was instrumental in bringing steel industry to Mysore and all that. Next is the Dr. K. L. Rao, who is also Padma Bhushan, who worked as a minister in the central government who joined as assistant technical engineer in the irrigation department and rose to the level of uh, minister for irrigation 
and water resources. This, you know, he is a do you know him? Metro man, yeah, that's right. He is engineer Sridharan, he is from Cochin. He also joined railways as a executive engineer to IES, which we all write. But his commitment, his honesty, his integrity to the profession has taken him to the level of uh, becoming managing director of uh, Delhi Metro Rail Corporation. Not only just becoming, that was not his target. Even after becoming managing director of Delhi Metro, even at the age of 85, he was not led to retire. He, he has created so much of uh, importance for him. That means 25 years post-retirement he is working, which he can't think of. And still he is sought after and he is the man behind all the metros in our country. So he is another inspiration living legend. And uh, next is uh, A. Ramakrishna. He is also known as LNT man, the man behind LNT's growth. LNT, in my, to my knowledge, LNT has grown in last 25 years from 1500 crore turnover to 30,000 crore turnover. So he is the man behind developing those systems, construction practices, and construction technology. He is, uh, unfortunately, he is no more with us. Two years back, he passed away. But he is a man I remember, I interacted very closely with. I had the opportunity also. So these are the people who have made our country proud of our own infrastructure. So the, our country has built the roads, golden quadrilateral, and the irrigation projects, and the great separated intersections in Delhi, and the Delhi Metro Rail, which is no way less than any of the international metros. I have traveled in most of the metros and I rate Delhi Metro as one of the best. Definitely. And the best metro internationally is Vienna now. And out of 150 metros that are built by the time when Delhi Metro was done, and Delhi Metro was one of the four metros which are making operational profit. And the man behind was Engineer Sridhar, you know all that. And this is the this is the underground tunnel of metro and you can see the quality of uh, concrete, the precast panels that are used and the kind of tunneling we have. It is done by our own engineers. And power plants, we have built so many power plants and we are, India is going to build 10,000 megawatts of nuclear power plant in single location. And uh, Kudankulam you know 1,000 megawatts and Simhati you know 1,000 megawatts, ETPS, Ramgundam, Kodakudan. All these power plants and a lot of engineers are behind this happening and cooling towers, challenging structures and construction. We hear that challenges can jump form or slip form that we use and uh, that modifies itself as it moves hyperbolic parabola itself. And wind mills, if you travel to Kanyakumari, you see these wind mills excellently in the top part. And the irrigation now, most talked about. <coughs> Everybody knows what is now <coughs> irrigation Mission Bhagiradha. Mission Bhagiradha is a water grid project which is connecting all the villages, all the household for drinking water and agriculture. This is the and cement product, industries. The major industries, minor industries, medium industries, the engineering industries, automobile. We have in Jahirabad biggest uh, Mahindra plant. Tractors are manufactured there and we are there behind them. And this is Bombay Valley Steel Bridge, which is again another challenging project handled in our country by Hindustan Council. And you can see the skyline of Bombay behind. It's, a, it's all done by our own Indian engineers. And the housing, 60 story residential towers in Bombay, done again designed and built by our own Indian engineers. And mass housing in Hyderabad also we see. And Pukatpali is the place for mass housing. You, you must be seeing Loda, 40 story buildings, and uh, the Musa Pet, uh, Cyber Meadows, Rainbow Vistas. All these projects are mass housing, coming under mass housing. Rainbow Vistas alone is building 1 crore square feet of houses. 1 crore square feet, which is equal to 5,000 square feet, uh, 5,000 villas, houses. And this is our own airport, which is the best in the world today. 
I rate it as the best airport because I've traveled so many airports internationally. Just in 20 years, we have changed the scenario in our country only by changing the procurement method. This is the first PPP airport in our country, public private partnership. And uh, GMR has built, and I always advocate that the new people think afresh. So, GMR didn't have any experience when they have built the Hyderabad airport. They are just industries, but they made the best. Whereas, parallel Siemens uh, LNT have built Bangalore airport. That is also a PPP project. But if you have traveled to Bangalore by air, you will agree with me that that is the worst airport that could have been done in the new age. Because just LNT wanted to use their ideal resources and they use not like skylight, not skylight, roof shells. And they made the whole roof flat. And we see this roof out. And after that, GVK took over. They have modified the roof to top. And they made more functional. And but still, Hyderabad is the airport which has the best functional design. This I, I read the best. And we are of civilization. As long as civilizations existed, though we call them engineers or not, maybe we used to call them master silpies, but we, we and master builders in uh, Europe, they used to call master builders. So uh, they have built the this is Europe anyway, Roman uh, thing. And Mondaro, they have built the houses, they have built the water supply, they have built the trainees, even when there was no engineering. But that is engineering, that is engineering. And uh, we provide the amenities, the constructed facilities. Every human being has to pass through the facilities built by us. And we are behind, engineers are behind. So, I just uh, define uh, the uh, difference between technology and engineering. Many people have confusion. Why you call chemical technology and why you call uh, in civil engineering? Why civil technology? But, but we call construction technology. Because a technology is something, a methodical science, methodical science. There is science in it, but it is methodically nurtured into an art by an engineer. Engineers do it. That is uh, activity based is technology actually. Process based is technology. Whereas engineering is an analytical science. It's an analytical science. It means we design, we analyze, we prepare the schedules, we plan everything. And now I'll be coming to the topic of <coughs> civil engineering profession as a profession model challenges we are facing. This is what we are here to discuss today. The first and foremost challenge is the rank and curriculum itself. Who, who are, what is the best rank here, can I know? In MSET. MSET only? You all yes. join to MSET. Below 1000, anybody? Okay. Anybody have, who has joined civilly with rank less than 1000? No. Ah, oh, that's good. What's your name? Anusha. Anusha. Which class? You are in the final. So, this is the challenge we are facing. Why not people, act? whereas when we studied, I know my friend with the rank of 30 in JE joined civil engineering in ID Bombay. And my friend with the rank of electronics or computer rank. But then I am benefited. It's not that others can't benefit, but others also, if they like, you start liking then you can be the best. This is what I say always. That's the purpose of my talk today. To develop that interest and commitment to this civil And then uh, we lack training, professional training. <coughs> you are taught uh, curriculum in your classes, the topics and all. But uh, how many of you have the opportunity to go and visit the site, spend two weeks there, what is happening, how it is actually, feel for construction? Have you, any of you mixed concrete? with your hand, not in the lab. <laughs> Outside. No? None of you. Ah, that's good. What's your name? Okay, thank you. You are in which year? Second year. Second year, that's good. That means not in the college. Even before joining, you will mix concrete. You are same with me. I mixed concrete when I was uh, nine years old. 
you don't do it. I mix concrete. I, I built brick wall with my own hands. Not as a mason, but a, with the interest. I did it. I know how to build a wall. I can train a mason how to build a wall. So this is engineering. You should like it. I can bend the bars. I can pour the concrete. I can compact the concrete. I did all those activities even before joining civil engineering. Because I wanted to be a civil engineer from the right from the age of five years. That is the commitment I had right from the childhood. And so the training part you require, and that's where we play a role. As I started, I found that there is a gap between the academia and the industry, and we wanted to bridge that gap, that role we are playing. And there is a vast scope and. How many of you know how much money is spent in construction in our country every year? Okay, any guess? Any guess? Loud. If you have a guess, please tell me. It is 15 lakh crores. 15 lakh crores in a year. In GDP actually. It's not in the national budget. In the national budget, if you take our national budget, how much is our national budget? Anyone of you know? It is 17 lakh crores for uh, six, uh, 16, 17 years. 17 lakh crores government spends, and out of that, 6 lakh crores goes into construction, various forms of construction. And 9 lakh crores from the private industry, that means whether it is construction of industry. And you know how many engineering months are required to spend 1 crore in construction? No, no guess. It is 10 man months per uh, 1 crore spent. This is my again finding. One required to spend 10 engineering man months to spend 1 crore in construction. But how many of them are really spending? That means if you have a 100 crore project, you need 1000 man months. And can you guess how much time is required to spend 100 crores in a construction project? 2 years. That means you thousand man months in two years, 24 months. So how many people are required to work every month? 40 engineers. 40 engineers. But you never see so many people working. That is where we are losing our opportunity. This is what I want to highlight. That's why you don't find jobs. Our jobs are taken away by somebody. Or we are overstressed, overloaded. At least I know two of the so-called site engineers. You know the word site engineer? That is wrong actually. The word itself is wrong. You don't find the definition of site engineer anywhere in any book, any document. Not defined. Only supervising engineer is defined. But what is site engineer then? Site engineer is all in all. He does procurement. He does the labor procurement. He supervises and he monitors, he does the quality, he does the weekly payment, he does everything, everything. And I, I knew in Hyderabad only two such people who lost their lives. War stress, war work. But that means instead of four people working or six people working on that project, one man worked. Then used to work 24 percent. I, I pray to them for their dedication and hard work, but I find fault with the society for making engineers lose their lives at the cost of other engineers' jobs. Other, other people have lost the jobs and this man has lost a life for the sake of job. How sad it is. So we have to change this scenario. This is where I say we are losing opportunities. Engineers are losing opportunities. And I also want to say, uh, civil engineering is the only profession that offers the best satisfaction to any individual in his job. Uh, can anyone define what is the happiness or joy or satisfaction? Actually, the best happiness a person can derive, uh, only when you experience you can say this, actually otherwise I want to tell you that it is not the happiness when you go to the best movie or best restaurant or have the best pizza. That is all short-lived satisfaction or happiness. But 
when you gain knowledge, when you are able to effectively utilize your knowledge, when you are able to see the results of application of your knowledge physically happening before your eyes, and when you can enjoy that. Suppose I live in a building which I have designed and constructed. That is satisfaction. If I find everything comfortable, happy, and and that is the professional satisfaction. In the life, to my definition, every human being is born. The primary purpose is work. That is the primary purpose. All the rest is supporting activity. Family, friends, or entertainment. All are required. I don't say that you don't require these things. But primary is work. That is the pillar of life. And in the pillar of life, you will enjoy your life only when you are satisfied with your work. You are satisfied with the work when you are stressed, you know, when an individual is stressed. You are stressed when you have exam tomorrow, you are not attended any of the classes, and you are given a book of 500 pages, and you have to write the exam tomorrow. That means you are not prepared, you don't know what is inside, you want to read but you can't read, the time is not enough, then you are stressed. You are stressed when you are handling something which you cannot. But this profession, our profession is such a profession, if you can balance everything properly, it is a profession when which you are not stressed. There is a saying actually, if you like your work, you are not working. If you like your work, you are not working. That means you enjoy. I give the example of uh, Federer or uh, Djokovic, if you watch tennis. Or I, I give the example of, uh, who is the latest player? Coach. <laughs> so, uh, and they, they enjoy their game and at the same time they are. Actually, for, if you and I have to go and play in the place of Kohli and the target of 100 runs in, to, in uh, 20 hours, we can't play. We are stressed. That means it's not our job. So if we take our job right, and if we try to use our knowledge with the proper knowledge, then you will enjoy that work, and then you are not working, you are playing. This is what I always say. So we have to derive this satisfaction means we have to like what we are in. We have to like what we are in. So this is about happiness and competition. These are all other challenges which you will realize once ethics is another thing. The fundamentals, I always say in our country, the fundamental uh, fundamentals of uh, uh, personality or characteristics we lost because of uh, centuries together we are being ruled by others and we defied generations together. I hope you understand what I am saying. Britishers when they ruled us, we are always fighting for our independence. So we don't, we, we are always Haktal, this, that and even off late we had even Telangana struggle. So it is in our blood not to follow the rules. But in the process we lost our ethics, honesty, integrity, even such qualities. So now we have to build as a country. As a country we have to build and our profession is no way away from this. And our profession is most affected because of this. So we have to fight even this. Corruption, the so-called corruption or dishonesty or loyalty, lack of loyalty. These are the things which we are facing, the challenges in this. And regionalism and uh, interdisciplinary, that means uh, architects taking away our job or masons taking away our job and uh, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers. We work with all of them, of course, in our projects. And we have a role to start with the investigation of the projects like topography, geo uh, geotechnical, environment impact assessment, recognition survey, drainage, what is the available drainage, power, water, wind roses and all, and uh, preparation of detailed project reports and design development and the feasible project feasibility and appraisal line estimates. This is the scope of civil engineering what we do. And the interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary, it is the civil engineers who are centric to any project actually, whether it is in construction or design. It is civil engineer who plays the crucial role. Let us assume that role. Or we can leave it to others also. 
So we have to choose between being central or supporting. I say that any project, I, I, I even tell many of the students that if you are interested, you can take it up as a small project. You, you go and survey the best buildings in Hyderabad. Best buildings. And check who are all the consultants behind in the design and who are all the contractors and who are the supervisors in that of the best building. Tell me how many of them are done by architects. So you will find that it is the engineer who dictates the best building actually. If one has to build the best building, it is the engineer who is behind and not an architect. The architect can conceive but if engineer can't do it, it cannot happen. So I always say that in civil engineers play the centric role and then uh, investigation, electrical, mechanical, we should also know a little bit of electrical mechanical. I do and four assistants, uh, some 30, 40 years back or even 50 years back. Today, even executive engineer is not provided with the vehicle. We have reached that stage because we are not commanding. We are not in a position to demand. But we do that, that kind of work. An engineer, executive engineer, you know the circle, how much he, he handles executive engineer, a complete taluk comes under executive engineer. And two, three executive engineer district, you have a superintending engineer. Now they are telling one chief engineer for every district. So we are reducing the standards of our own engineers and we are not demanding. So we can demand when we deliver. We can deliver when we are good. We are good when we change its course. We have found a desert because of the change in the uh, climate. Now also we are experiencing the climate change. Either you have huge floods or no water. So civilization is effective. We are using brutal force to get water. We are pumping all the way water from Krishna and we are losing our own Manjira, Himai Sagar, or Usman Sagar. We are filling those lakes and we are pumping water from Krishna. What is this? We are going to be affected. It's not sustainable. See, cities. The cities will cease to exist if they are, if they are not sustainable, if we are not conscious about this primary resource that is water for living. So, water, irrigation and hydrology is the best thing. And we have the canals, drains, dams, garages, and the hydro project we build. And the next is important is public health. Okay, you have water, then you have proper drainage, you have water supply system, and the environment management, the drain treatment or solid waste management. So these are the next things important for them. So environment and water resource. These are the two That is discounts, the so-called discounts we see in distribution. Telangana Southern State, Telangana State South Distribution Company, discount. And uh, Transmission Corporation. And then generation, you have a Genco company where we have this pocket thermal plant and a lot of new thermal plants are being built. So we work for all this and communication. The cell phones that we are using, the phones have required a lot of engineers on design, supervision, quality, and all. There are a lot of people there also. And then disciplines uh, are structural engineering. We are aware of the structures, design of structures, you know, just like cardiologists. Now we are in, uh, that means if you see the map of Hyderabad, how it is shifting, Google it, you can Google it, uh, I think it's time. And you can see how the city has shifted. You can study that. And housing is a requirement which, which is changing the requirement. So the need for housing will be there always. Because what is the life of the house? <coughs> One person can live. Sixty. Yeah, that is life of structure, not the house. What is the life of the house? House means every ten years people change. Their flooring, their kitchen, their, the requirements change actually every 10 years. If you study your own house, either uh, the flooring gets uh, damaged or you get new flooring, better flooring, better, better power, utilities like uh, refrigerator, microwave. The way we live is changing fast. So you have to modify, you have to retrofit your houses. So there is a huge demand for housing actually. 
and this urbanization is another thing that is growing this demand. You know what is urbanization? That means people change the shipping from villages to cities center. And then roads, highways and road to road. We have railways. We are adding, kept on adding railways because the population growth and demand. Airports, you know how many ports and harbors, bridges. And uh, surveying and GIS and the industry side we have the heavy mining, medium, medium industries and process industries, food processing. You know a lot of food processing industries are coming up now. The ready to eat stuff. People stop cooking in kitchens now. So everything has to be processed and supplied. And then construction planning and management. This is one of the big disciplines actually which absorbs maximum people. For uh, construction planning and management. Uh, and we have materials, products, equipment, and machinery. There also we need engineers to work, plan, understand the efficiencies of the machinery. And we have tourism and entertainment. I had the opportunity to work for a lot of you have nowadays in Mahalakatri you see this as SVM everywhere. That will attract the medium aged children. That is uh, 10 to 20 years. And now, but below 10, we can go to the PCP. We can go to the finance. We can work like that. And next is the academics career, as a career, teaching. Do you know there are a lot of opportunities for teaching here? And uh, the institutions, are, and I'm sure they is working on that uh, regulation, regularization, or uh, monitoring on uh, faculty in different colleges. But a lot of colleges don't have proper faculty. And that is the reason why you prefer the interview. Because the faculty, I have seen some colleges where the average experience of faculty is only three years. That means after BTEC or after MTEC. Two to three years they are working as faculty. Which is not very good at scenario. Not even a single doctorate in faculty. So we have the opportunity. One I am complaining. I am telling there is an opportunity for us to take up that as a profession and demand every college to employ proper, trained, qualified engineers to be faculty in the colleges. This is the opportunity lost again in civil engineering. So, next is the research. We have a premier institutions of research in ISRO, we know how the success story of ISRO. There, if you have seen the news 20 years back, every time they used to launch PSLV or SLV, we used to be upright, it was crash. But today, our ISRO is launching 20 satellites, 40 satellites at a time. We have reached that level. That is the RM. In similarly, in instruction engineering, we have a CRC, we have a CRRI, Road Research Institute. There is a lot that can be done. We have these research institutions which we want. So I always tell them that we have we also had that culture but somehow in the past we lost. But we have to regain that to really succeed. So academics is the next thing. So I am urging all of you, if you think you are the best, you have the, the urge to contribute to the society. Teaching is the next. And third is the engineering and management, technology and management, technocrats. That's what we are mostly balanced level of care. The fourth level is there, that is below the uh, technocrat and in this one, they are administrative side, IAS officer, the so far. So I feel they sacrifice lesser than these three. And they earn more than what they deserve. And the next is the fourth level, that is politicians. and cinema are the only two things which you can never predict what will happen. Even if you are the best, you are pro It's not related to your ability or education, it is your manner, it is your diplomacy, it is your strategy that determines your success. So let's not go into that. So I always say that research is in one's hand, one's brain, completely related to the brain. Nobody can affect him. No industry, you keep inventing, Nobody can affect your invention. And the next comes the teaching. You want to teach, nobody can affect you. I am telling you, least politics. 
in teaching. And next comes the our uh, own subject. So this is the, the guidance for you to choose which way to go. Research, academics, or so And next week in Kenya we have the design. Design I always keep it at the best because uh, it's not about pain. Again, within in engineering, design is the place where you want to use your brains maximum. Design and develop, and then planning, then tendering, big documents, contract administration, contract management, and QS, construction technology and management. I put in the order, supervision, quality control and assurance, it's a support activity actually. And then technical audits, investigation, geotechnical engineering, and topographic survey. These are the disciplines. And then we have the consulting broad-based uh, division, like I am a consulting engineer. And you have the IT applications like GIS, AM and FM. AM and FM is the new thing, which is again advanced mapping and facility management, which is the basic layer for any smart city actually. We talk about smart cities, but every smart city requires the same and the digitization of all the services, what supply, power, and all. In computer design, BPO applications, we, we can do in engineering, BPO. Uh, business process also, IT test, IT and services, these are the opportunities we have. And valuation, one can become a valuer if you are interested, you can be on your own. Entrepreneurs, you, you can be an entrepreneur in materials, marketing, production, and all, in civil engineering. Like granite, carpa stone, and all these things, cement, cement uh, grinding units, and all. I know a lot of entrepreneurs who are in this. Or even precast now, PEB, three minute building. And contractors, any one of us can become a contractor. Uh, for DFMC doing these road works and all that. And project management consultants, builders, and developers. You can also do the developer work here. It's an opportunity. So, civil engineering are so many startups actually. You can be a startup in any of these fields if you have that ability to think and commitment to work and be on your own. I, I, I mean, I want to tell you here another important point the difference between an employee and employer. Employer is an entrepreneur, and employee is a person working for an entrepreneur. I, I face some people asking me how to become an entrepreneur. That was the question asked. I said, if you have to think or understand about how to become an entrepreneur, better don't become. Entrepreneur or researcher, they are not made. They become. They push themselves into it. That is an example actually. I, I when I worked in two companies before starting my own, I could never follow boss inspection because I always used to find fault with the boss. Boss approach is wrong for the company, for the benefit of the company. So two jobs I tried, I fought with the bosses, I thought I am not fit to work under anybody. So I could be on my own. I pushed myself. So like that, researcher. Researcher, I tell you, if you decide to be a researcher, you are a failure. You have to become a researcher on your own. Like you should have an urge to find something. I am not talking about research is doing PhD. Doing PhD is not research. Right? You are acquiring another qualification. But the researcher is the one, I know some researchers who don't sleep all through the night. And they don't feel stressed because they are solving the problem. The brain gets relieved once they solve the problem. So that is the urge. And next is the government department. That is the easiest thing one can do actually and also the difficult thing one has to do. So uh, in central government, you, through IDS, you have first in the central government, I read if one wants to be in the government, the best departments that we have in our country is the CWD, railways, MES, water roads organization, and NHA, National Highway Authority. These are the prime departments who absorb maximum through IDS. And railways is the first preferred because we have the best process. Next comes the public sector undertaking, like BHL, Power Grid Corporation, or uh, EIL, all these uh, companies. You have the best process. And even defense organizations like DRD, or DRDL, or uh, BDL, Bharat Dynamics, they're all in the public sector. And next comes our state department. 
that is RMT irrigation from Thaikaraj. I am telling you the same sequence of preference I am telling you to work with. And in the central government we have CWC also, Central Water Commission and uh, Water Resources Department. So finally, I put all of them challenges that we have in one slide. Integrity is the biggest challenge. Integrity means civil engineering, being civil engineering, and working for the project and not for the people, not for this game. That is the challenge. And quality of civil engineering, leadership in civil engineering. We have to be leaders at the and we are not taught anywhere this leadership. But one has to practice himself. And the economy in projects cost consciousness and then managing the liberties this is another uh, lacking we have I, I have seen in 10 days there are 4 billion collapses in Hyderabadilla we, and we talk about sustainability we talk about green carbon footprint and we, we make our buildings collapse what sustainability we are talking about we have to first learn to build the basic thing and that availability and public trust we are losing because we are not implementing our engineering standards, which we know very well. So, this is the challenge. And IQ levels, IQ levels is not a real challenge, that's why. And systems and processes, this is what I said, for a building to be built, first learn to insist on adequate engineers who can implement the design properly. And professional ethics and healthy competition, these are the challenges. So, having said all that, I also want to show the projects which we have done. I'll just quickly run through. We have, as engineers, we have won even architectural competition, design competition. We have rated the best ever in some of the projects. And we have done even the master plan of the projects. This is the IT part in Tripura, uh, Agarthala. And uh, it's completed. And it's a challenging defense project in Arunachal Pradesh on Chinese border. Where the temperatures, the lowest temperature is minus 25 degrees and the highest temperature is plus 20 degrees. So we, we did the survey, then there was a snowfall. We did the soil investigation, then there was a snowfall. It's a challenging project, very important strategy for our country. And I am very happy to have been associated with that. But these are all bad ones. And we completed in such challenging conditions the projects in two years. Where for a person to reach that place from Yawati, it takes uh, two days. So, and uh, you can't uh, take trucks more than five tons to that place because the culverts are not designed for capacity more than five tons of the water weight. This is all the plan. This is nuclear power corporation and uh, we have done the housing for defense in uh, Hyderabad, Chennai, Bangalore. It's a uh, 500 crore project. This is uh, Tech Mahindra, all their campuses and earlier uh, Satyam, we are associated with the design of the solid plan. And the housing, we, we got for Janapira, uh, Dell, High Tech City, uh, their campus. This is the challenge we did. This uh, 6 lakh square feet building is constructed and occupied within 6 months. And recently, uh, we did not put, but uh, the Amaravati Secretariat for the AP government. In fact, JVU has done the peer review and we have done, we have the total design consultant which is completed in 4 months time, 6 lakhs here. And this is a high risk building, 26 story, first tallest residential building in Hyderabad. And this is the ISP 20 story building with mass housing for the defense building. And this is the hospitals in the land, in GK1 there. Laser gallery, slow walls. And we are doing snow theme parks in Chennai and Mumbai also. This is the office building. IT, India, Midway, Vidam, Vandarai. This is the entire campus of Satyam in Badu, 120 acres. And these are power plants. We have done even power generation plants, 106 megawatts in Dora, Mandira, in Pinachia. And Metro, we have even worked on uh, Gurgaon Metro and Chennai Metro. We have done the design. And industrial projects like Schneider, Mahindra, 
without an engineer itself. Are you aware of that? I will give you an example. Panchayat Raj. Sarpanch calls for a tender and a non-engineer executes the job. Houses, how many of the people who build houses approach an engineer to construct the house? And with all my experience even today, to build a house that is to the best satisfaction of both our wife and husband, I will never do it. That is the real challenge. It requires real engineering to build a house. So we are losing a lot of opportunities. So, yeah, track record means, yeah, through smart interest now, I have placed at least 100 interns in the last 2-3 months. We are now going on. It's not, we are placing in my company. I, I, my company also I take. If you ask me individually, I have been recruiting interns, uh, giving product training, JNP students have given a lot of product training and they are very successful. Uh, whoever have worked with me, even from NITs, IITs, they come to me, students. But I thought it's not me alone. I must connect with the industry. So recently we conducted a summit. 50 companies, whatever names I am telling, they are all called to a platform. And 50 colleges, professors, head of the department, we made them sit and debate on why to answer your question. Why is it that we are not able to place students? So industry is complaining on the students. Students are complaining on the colleges. Colleges are complaining on the industry. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> so we have to solve this. Where do we solve? How do we solve? So we have to bring them together. We have to communicate with each other. And we have to tell you our feedback. What industry expects from students. And how to meet that expectation. This is what we do. I'm sure there are opportunities, there is no depth of opportunities to my knowledge. This is what I am trying to do now through barriers, through barriers, through leap. Leap is the finishing school. Eh? I bridge the gap between what to study and what industry expects. I bridge the gap. So we are trying to have uh, employment and employability. These are the two things which, which is a challenge for students and industry. But industry employability is the challenge. But the students' employment is the challenge. So we are trying to solve these two, playing the role in big monkey's role. So we do that. I am sure I will be successful. So if there are not any more questions, we have a mail ID here, studio we have a phone number, office number, 3980 This is my direct number. 3980 So you can call me or you can mail me anytime for any question.